Are you a security awareness advocate who's wondering about human risk management? Or are you a human risk management advocate who's wondering why people are still doing security awareness? Well, today on the live Cybersecurity Awareness Forum, number 42, we'll be diving into this crazy mix of terminology and asking, should we be moving from security awareness to human risk management? And what does it really mean if it means anything? So welcome to the live CSAF, uh, the open collaboration group for anyone who's passionate about security awareness and human risk management. Uh, brought to you by ClickArmor, the first fully gamified cybersecurity training platform for employees in all roles. But I'll tell you more about ClickArmor later. I'm Scott Wright, the CEO and Chief, uh, Chief Engagement Officer at ClickArmor, and we're really glad that you're joining us today. As usual, I'm joined by our informed group of panelists, so let's meet them now. Thea Mannix is a behavioral neuroscientist with over 10 years of experience in studying how the biology of our brains can influence our behavior. In her current role as Director of Research for Praxis Security Labs, Thea now works on applying her experience to cybersecurity scenarios surrounding the human element. We also have Fleetus Poston, uh, who's a seasoned IT and security professional, currently a security operations manager. And beyond his expertise, he finds immense joy in sharing his passion for cybersecurity with others and gaining OPSEC and tr tricking people. Uh, we also have Ryan Healy Ogden, who's the Director of Cybersecurity Solutions at ClickArmor. He's a passionate speaker and educator who loves helping people understand and implement great security training programs. So uh, those are the folks that we're going to be talking to today and getting their opinions. Now, um, we like to have attendees type into the chat where they're joining us from around the world so we can see what kind of international participation we have. And it gets also gets you used to entering questions and comments in the chat. So it's a, sort of an ulterior motive there. Motive. So uh, please join us. Uh, we've got people already from Oslo, Ottawa, Mount Forest, Ontario. Uh, where else? Ramara, Ontario, Denver, Montreal, uh, North Carolina, Toronto, San Jose, Fort Lauderdale, Vancouver, Minnesota. Awesome. Thanks so much, folks, for uh, joining and for uh, typing that stuff in. Um, I'm going to just do a tiny bit of housekeeping, if I can share my screen. Here we go. Okay. So uh, what we do with these sessions is, um, I don't have to spend a lot of time on this. Most of you know, we record the sessions, we tr do transcripts, we do blog posts, we do newsletters. We also do a quarterly uh, report on uh, security awareness for, for CISOs. And most of all, we have uh, a community uh, called the Cybersecurity Awareness Forum, uh, and you're welcome to join us there. So with all that taken care of... Um, I'm going to just do a one slide intro in terms of the context to set the stage. I, in doing a bit of research on this, I realize how little I know about human risk management and how little I know about security awareness, which is strange. But uh, I think it's uh, interesting to sort of look at what documentation or or uh, literature is out there to help people understand some of these differences. So if you look at it from the point of view of uh, one of the chatbots that I was consulting with, trying to understand, okay, how did how does it typically portrayed? We look at it from the point of view of security awareness being understanding of security threats, best practices, policies, and uh, policies by individuals within an organization. So how well are people learning and, and following those policies? Um, but on the human risk management side, it's identifying, assessing, mitigating risks arising from human behaviors and interactions. Um, so that has a little inference in there I'm going to ask Thea about later on. But um, I think the other things are the focus of security awareness is on knowledge and vigilance, where the focus of human risk management uh, is apparently on holistic approach, uh, considering organizational cultures, processes, human factors. And the scope is individual centric for uh, security awareness and organizational and systemic for human risk management. Uh, training emphasis is on education and training programs for security awareness. And in the human risk management uh, area, it's integrated risk management strategies, whatever that means. Let's let's talk about that too. Uh, on the outcome side, awareness is building improved security practices and incident prevention, where human risk management is reducing human-related risks and enhancing organizational resilience. So that's where we're going to start from. And first thing I'm going to do 
is start with a poll. We uh, usually spread three polls out throughout uh, the sessions, and I'm going to let the panelists vote as well. So first question is, which of the following is true for you? Um, this is my way of sort of trying to position this so that everybody has a sees something of themselves in it. I use security awareness to refer to an entire program for cybersecurity training and assessment. I use human risk management for that same purpose. Or maybe I use security awareness to refer to only a portion of the program, but it's not a human risk management program. And I use human risk management to refer to only a portion of a program, but it's not a security awareness program. Or I use both security awareness and human risk management to refer to distinct parts of the same program. So it'll be uh, interesting to see people's results on that. I'm going to let that poll run for a little while. And then we're going to move to our first open question for the uh, panel, but also feel free to enter any questions or comments on things that the panelists are saying, or if you think that these questions are stupid, feel free to jump in and ask your own questions. And um, we're, we're happy to discuss them. Um, as I said, I found it really hard to really articulate what we're actually talking about in some cases, just because of the different, different types of literature that's out there and it gets confusing. So hoping we can clarify that and, and just understand you know, how many different perspectives there are and, and what people are doing. So I'll open it up to the panel. Um, easiest way is if you guys can put up uh, your hand, if you have something you want to say or comment on. Uh, but other than that, I'm going to ask people to uh, take turns uh, in, a, in a roundtable format uh, to give their impressions. So I'm going to call on Ryan because he put his hand up first. Thanks, Scott. Uh, I mean, for me, it's 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 kind of quick and, and straight to the point. You know, we... We're kind of making this transition, you know, and I think from a logical point of view, I look at it, it's all because of the human aspect. And so if we are, you know, if we are putting the humans as our kind of priority piece in the industry, uh, if we're going to look at, you know, how, how to be most effective and we keep, you know, the answer keeps being the human element, uh, where's our biggest risk, the human element, then I think, you know, this is where we, we need to then speak appropriately to the, the problem we're trying to solve. Um, and by saying, you know, just security awareness, I think we just kind of keep ourselves trapped in a bit of a box uh, and that, you know, the industry has kind of been overlooking the human element in all of this. And so I think just by kind of reframing it, it the way we do and, and expanding our you know ability to look at it, it'll give everybody, including the humans, you know, a better opportunity to, to learn and, and make the most benefit from it. Excellent. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, Thea. Yeah, so um, I think that's actually raises a really interesting question of kind of why should you care uh, or why should organizations care? And I think the first thing that we need to do is, is why should the industry care rather than individual organizations? Mm -hmm. Because we need to know what that definition is and we need to know what we mean by that before we start trying to get organizations on board with different types of things um something that i've heard an argument that i've read actually scott in your uh, discussions on linkedin about this is well it doesn't really matter what we call it it matters what the substance is mm -hmm. um and i can absolutely see how, how how people feel like that but actually as a neuroscientist that that really frustrates me because i know that what we label things changes our very visual perception of an object, mm -hmm. um, literally, um, we we the way that we we categorize things and talk about things changes how we view things, and it changes the direction of the industry. And like you said, one of the issues is with security awareness training is number one, it puts focus on knowledge equaling behavior, and we know that knowledge does not exist in a vacuum. With behavior change, it's in a much bigger, broader picture. It has to include a lot of other things. Mm. Um, and the second reason why people need to care about it is because, again, security awareness training puts focus linguistically on the individual. You need more knowledge. It's, and once you've got that knowledge, it's up to you to go and change your behavior. And that's not true. What we need to focus on is changing the environment that people are mm. operating, not changing individual behavior. That is very high cost and low reward mm -hmm. to go into an individual and say, I'm going to change how you behave. I'm going to change the environment so that you tend to behave how I want you to is a much more efficient system. Um, so if an organization was considering why should I do human risk management, it's because of that. It's much more efficient um, and, and much more valuable. I love that. I'm writing this down. <laughs> it's hard. It's a high cost, low reward to change individual behavior. I love that. Um, Pletus, I must, you must have a comment. 
I have a couple here, but not as big as we probably think. Kind of where Thea was going. It's a cultural aspect. Um, I already put the first comment that we've heard from a former panelist, and I've heard in many circles, is what are we making you aware of? Um, there's an awareness every month. Like every month, there's a new awareness program or sponsorship, and you're always aware of something. So when we say security awareness, security is a broad term. And we joked at the beginning of this call, like, I can say security, and you're going to think physical, you're going to think offensive, you're going to think de defensive, depending on what your upbringing is, what your culture of your company is. If you're a safety-focused company, which a company I came out of, you're going to think safety. First, when you think security of how do I secure my environment, how do I do walk-downs, how do I do level one safety moments, that's where security is going to come in, is your protection, your bubble. So that from the, the neuro side of it, I want to make sure I'm safe. So security mm -hmm. to me is being comfortable. Um, and then on the cyber side of it, it aligns more with what your GRC teams are doing, your governance risk and compliance. When you say human risk, you're also applying that to your risk model. That could be part of your uh, risk register. You can actually look at what the human side of your risk register looks like versus just focusing on processes, people, and technology. Like that people really needs to be the human, not just people being, I have 100 employees or 10,000 employees. Yeah, I think that's very insightful. And I think one thing I've learned is I've changed my view a little bit on how I would have defined uh, human risk management, because when I started Click Armor several years ago, I actually came from a risk management background. And when someone asked, you know, what was our differentiator or what was our unique value proposition? I would say, well, we help manage human risks, but I can't say that in the industry because the industry is always talking about security awareness. And that's what the first thing that the management understands. And so now I'm thinking about it more from, uh, at that time I was thinking managing human risk actually meant we've got technology risks, we've got risks from human decisions. And I was looking at it from the point of view of what can we do to strengthen uh, the humans, make them less vulnerable, and in that way we can start managing the risk. But there's a lot more in some people's view to what the whole uh, area of human risk management actually is. So I want to hear from people on those things too. All right, so uh, I'm going to turn off the uh, current poll and start the next one. Um, and this one is, do you believe that there is any significant value in changing the name of a program from security awareness to human risk management? So it keeps us going in that little uh, uh, area. And I've got to find my uh, thing for sharing screen just so people can see that uh, poll. Yeah, here we are. Um, so the options are yes, no, it depends because maybe you've got a different way of looking at it or you just don't know. So we'll let it uh, go from there and see what people say. Um, and the second open question for uh, the panel is what are the pitfalls or risks from making the shift to human risk management? If that's what you want to do and you want to broaden this um, from just training and understanding uh, to actually changing behavior. So I'm going to uh, let uh, Fletus go first this time. Yeah, I really want to hear Thea's on this because I think this is where I've been mm -hmm. doing my research. Is it really comes back to the cultural aspects of your company. Are you a hybrid company? Are you fully in office? Are you like geolocated in the same block? Are you in a metropolitan? Are you global? Really defines how these terms would play because like Thea said earlier, a label means something and it doesn't always transfer very well when you leave a geolocation. So like what I call in the Carolinas, you may not find the same value or same stance in Canada, Germany, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So what I label things has to be very well scrutinized when I start to produce material or branding when it leaves the geolocation in which I live in. Because I use very slang terms because I'm in the south, the southern part of the U.S., I can't use slang if I'm in a very black and white culture. It has to be professional tone. It has to be an active tone. It can't be passive. Stuff like that needs to be talked into. And you just changing from security awareness to um, human risk is not going to do anything if there's no culture behind shifting of just a label because the label may not mean anything. Yeah, understood. Um, Ryan. Yeah. I, you know, my, I, my take on this is just more of a general kind of, you know, I think I'll let Thea kind of talk to the, the label aspect. Cause again, like Fletus, I'm interested in, in hearing her perspective, but anytime you move in 
a program within an organization, you're always going to lose traction on your previous program. So from when I look at it, it's, you know, okay, so what's the risk reward here of retitling this? Are we going to lose a lot of momentum that we've built already with a very successful awareness program? Because all of a sudden we're introducing a new, you know, uh, you know, HRM program, right? So you start to, if you start to rename things sometimes without the proper, again, communication and setup and transfer and stuff, I always worry, you know, okay, we've done all this work and we've, we've been fighting so hard in the industry to get security awareness embedded and respected and talked about. And the fact that we can even have a biweekly forum and have this many people show up, like people care about it, but we've had to fight for this. And, and we know from having security awareness managers on this panel, how challenging their, their jobs are of getting buy-in from everyone. So now just imagine if you're tasked with or you thought, okay, I'm going to rename this. That's going to be a massive over over you know haul. And, and that's a big undertaking. And, and I think you have to be you know concerned of losing any of the buy-in support and momentum you've already built. Yeah, excellent points. Um, Thea? Yeah, I think that was actually a good rundown, Ryan, of some of the risks there. Um, my argument here is, do we need to replace security awareness with human risk management? Or do we need to introduce human risk management as an overarching feature of security awareness? Because this is how we avoid that problem. We don't want to go into people now, as you've said, we've spent 10, 15 years going mm -hmm. security awareness, security awareness, security awareness. And then we go in and go, actually, change my mind, something else. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know it's yeah. taking you 10 years to get on board with this idea, but here's a new idea. Um, yeah. It's not going to go down very well. You're also looking at a lack of, I suppose, expertise in terms of human risk management. It really is in control of people that have understanding of things like organizational culture. You've got your human resources are going to be an enormous part of that process, mm -hmm. what you do. And, and when you switch to human risk management, you switch to organizational culture no longer being an optional consideration for your security. Mm -hmm. It's now mandatory. You have to have an understanding of that. You know, there are a limited number of organizational psychologists. There's a limited number of funding available in order to get these things assessed. A lot of organizations are sitting there not with an official assessment of their organizational culture. You're going to have to. It's a huge shift. This is an enormous shift um, and it's going to be expensive and nobody's going to want to. Pay for it. <laughs> so I think introducing it as an addition on top of security awareness and all the good work that security awareness has done. It's, it's run away with itself a little bit, in, in my opinion, in terms of a, a terminology. Um, but it's all the good that we have done with it, what we don't need to replace, we need to introduce that. That would be my, 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 my yeah. Theory. That's that's amazing. And getting some great comments too. I think that we should uh, acknowledge in the uh, chat. Um, I'll I'll take on uh, one from uh, Jonathan Curran who who mentions behavior of employees can be moved based on. KPIs that you set because there's clear incentive to move uh, their behavior. I agree, uh, Jonathan, that um, that can work really well, especially if the KPIs are aligned with the organization's goals, of course, which is what you want them to be, and that there's some alignment with what people um, actually want to do themselves, because sometimes people's uh, objectives are not always aligned with the organization's. Um, so that's where I, I can see sometimes there could be a challenge in in doing that. And I also remember a quote that I, I think I posted on LinkedIn um, in uh, reply to one of uh, Kai's uh, uh, posts earlier, and that was in the security culture playbook that uh, Kai was an author of or co-author. Uh, there was a, a quote from a researcher, I can't remember his name, but he said, it's easy to change security culture uh, or security behavior. It's just not easy to change it in the way you want. So it's a, it's a really interesting point. So I get what you're saying, Jonathan. I think there's also the the aspect is there's some challenges there and making sure that everything aligns and and that you actually can. Uh, I think from my point of view, one of the things that's hard about KPIs is you you expect that people will move in that direction because it's in their interests, but you don't necessarily know if they really know how to do it. Um, so you can put a um, you know, a metric up to say, you know, how many people clicked on the last uh, phishing message, but how many people actually know whether or not, you know, uh, a sender email address is good or bad, or a link is good or bad, or how do we evaluate the body text of a phishing email? And so putting those KPIs up there can actually be frustrating for people if they don't actually know the actions they need to take to get there. So um, I think those all are, are ways that we can align. Um, anybody else want to uh, mention a comment? Yeah. yeah. 
a little bit and then kind of dive into a little bit of Alex's and yeah. his recent one. I do agree. Human risk should be more encompassing, but security awareness should tailor to what your human risk management program that goes back to the larger behavioral thing that Thea just said. Like once you understand organizational behavior, organizational component to your security awareness is just another tool in your toolbox. And that's why security awareness is still going to be used inside of human mm -hmm. risk management. It's just going to be a little S and a little A versus the big S, big A. But it doesn't have to be at the beginning. You can slowly move back and forth and keep bouncing in. Well, HR has this ability to help you. The IT team has this ability to help. And this is where that human risk comes into play is you're educating and showing them how to use the right tool in the toolbox. So not always using a hammer for a screw or a screwdriver for a nail. It gives them that ability to know the culture behind it. And then also to uh, uh, Terry's point, I think here, or was it Alex's, is like, it can't just be compliance. We all know if, you're comp if your program is compliance-based, you're going to burn people out or they're just going to do it their own way. Like I've shared many times and we've seen the analogy, you can build a beautiful brick path, but the path of least resistance is to walk through the grass. And you're going to walk through, you're going to cut the corner and you're going to go around it every single time because your human nature is going to do the least resistant. So if it's just culture or compliance, I mean, just compliance based, your results are going to be wrong to, to what you want him to do. Mm -hmm. Ryan, did you get a chance to speak on this yet? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I want to actually highlight Kim's comment in the chat as well. So he said, I had a conversation with some peers on the issue and human risk management, it covers, you know, other aspects outside of information security. So we do have to kind of be careful to his point, you know, for example, it can be related to ethics, behavior, culture, et cetera. And once it becomes too broad, it could be difficult to capture everyone's attention. So, you know, to his point, like you, you do have to be careful with what you are trying to accomplish. And if you start to dilute the water a little too much by over broadening it, then yeah, I, I could see how people would be like, well, where does this fall? Is this my HR training or is this my IT training? Is this my security training? I don't know. And, you know, if it's not clear, it might not sink in as well. Yeah, for sure. Um there's other uh, comments. I think Tony mentions, you know, that the name is important um, because uh, security awareness can maybe pigeonhole things too much in the areas of communication and training. But you could also look at it maybe as as Fleetus does, where security awareness is a tool within the toolbox of things. And as long as you're clear on how that uh, context happens, then I think... Um, it's it's okay to use the term security awareness as um, I'm, I'm getting clarity on it just from this discussion. So that's that's great. At least I'm getting value out of this. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else is. Uh, Thea? Um, one of the major concerns that I have just following on from what Ryan said is that when we don't have a clear definition ourselves of what we mean by, for example, human risk management, a lot of people with very good marketing experience are able to kind of jump on that and start promoting their business as though they do that. And unless we have this kind of strict thing, what is human risk management? We're at danger again of coming up with 25 different definitions of it, depending on what you're trying to sell. Yeah. Um, so I think us as, as a real, of course, we have our businesses and we're not necessarily neutral, but, you know, having these kind of spaces, Scott, like this and the forum itself, mm. where we can come together as, uh, you know, peer to peer and discuss these things and, and try and come up with a definition <laughs> of what that means is, is really important. So I just kudos. <laughs> Oh, thanks. Yeah. And uh, I'm losing track of who's said what here in the chat, but Shelly uh, mentions, you know, moving from security awareness training to human risk management can actually be positioned as a maturation or a maturity uh, mm -hmm. evolution, which I think is a great, great point. Yeah, it, it recognizes that we're open to new ideas. You know, we're we're evolving with security and and and, and trends and, and threats and everything else. And, you know, yeah, we didn't pay enough attention to the people. We get it. But now it is time. So let's reframe how we have this conversation. And that doesn't mean we have to rename things, right? That doesn't mean we have to stamp a name on it and say, from this day forward. But I think what we want to do as a community and as leaders from different companies, if we can come together and just start to have the conversation, well, you know, this is a bigger picture item. So let's look at this more holistically. And each, you know, each organization is going to have to treat this differently, you know, but to everyone's point, all we're trying to do is build security culture. And, you know, that it comes with a lot of different activities and actions and security awareness is one of those, you know, uh, and, and there's going to be, you know, other contributing factors. So it's it's an evolution. I think that's the best probably way to look at this.
Yeah, I want to add one more thing real quick, and then we'll go on. This the name change, and I hate to just say name change, might also get you a, the right seat at the right table, because I think a lot of our programs are too far removed from the people who can make the change in your organization. So mm -hmm. there's many leaders who think your awareness should be closer to a C level versus removed from a C level. They need to be directly accessible and maybe even briefing your board and your SLT, your senior leadership team, more than just briefing the employees. Because I think if we can get to that level, you have the opportunity for all lines of businesses, HR, legal, IT, security, to, to leverage this program to drive home compliance, maturity, product development. Like there's ways marketing can use you if it's done correctly to say our company cares, mm -hmm. our product cares. We put the right amount of attention in every aspect from end to end in our company. So from the day you're hired to the day you retire or leave us, we're, we're pushing human risk management across all aspects of our team, not just yeah. And, and you think about how much companies really love to talk about and promote mm -hmm. how much they love their employees for so many other reasons. Like, hey, we've got the best vacation package. We've got the best benefits package. We've got the best X, Y, Z. Come join our culture, our team. Play ping pong on your break. But, you know, do any of them say, like, we'll help you with your, your security and your overall posture? We are a secure environment. Like, you don't have to worry. It's not a culture we talk about. And it's not a culture that we invite people to. But it's going to be something that people pay attention to. Like Fleetus, like honestly, if you were looking to join a new organization, you would likely, you know, look into their security culture and what they do and how they operate before you evaluate it if you were going to be a good fit with them. More and more professionals are going to be going that way. And if we talk about, you know, a bigger picture where human risk management is part of the culture and the change, I think it, it could actually attract more, uh, you know, employees. It could retain more employees and it becomes another normal conversation versus, you know, you just got to do your security awareness training. It has nothing to do with the rest of your life and job. That's an amazing point, uh, Ryan. It was, made me think of uh, another podcast. It was the Shared, Shared Security Podcast that I co-host a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about uh, Glassdoor, which is uh, yeah. a website that a lot of people use when they're looking for a new job, right? And they re recently purchased another company that was more of a social company. I can't remember the name. But then they all of a sudden had a privacy issue. And so uh, that, that's a whole other story. But I think people do go and look on these websites to understand you know, what the culture of the organization they're going to join is. And if there are stories stories in there about, you know, how much hypocrisy, uh, hypocrisy there is um, mm -hmm. within the organization around security or whatever, um, that could, in fact, uh, imp uh, impact people as well. Um, well for just, sure. If you went on and read, like, uh, they send me like a phishing, you know, simulation every week, you know, and people mm -hmm. are getting fired because they're failing, like, that's going to drive people away. And, and I don't think people are aware of that when they're making their programs and when they're enacting these, you know, simulations and these tools and these different kind of metrics on people, they're not considering the fact that there's an entire reactionary kind of world to that. Yeah. I wanted to also follow up on Cletus's point about visibility to executives. And I thought he was going to say something, so I'll just add it. And that is when you talk about uh, executive interests, most of the time, they're very tuned into risks, but just not cyber risks all the time. They're, they're getting more there. But uh, in the past, it's financial risks. It's, um, you know, economic risks. There, there's you know other kinds of operational risks. And if you can call it human risk management, and that's what the cyber uh, security program needs, then I think executives will be more open and, and visible and able to, to talk to you. Yeah, I'll add one thing real quick to that. And it's the reason I'm talking about this a little bit is I attended a recent talk where we we're talking about the SEC changes again for those in the US, the Security Exchange Commission, what they've required from the CISO, he or she isn't having the right briefings with your audit board because there's not enough, to your point, human risk brought to the board level. They think about operational finance risk. They think about the environmental risk of their company, both from what, what they produce and what could impact Compliance them. risks, but, all that stuff, yeah. yeah. But they're not always thinking about that and they're not getting the right visibility to be able to say, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that my team is aware of this vendor. Like the top 100 is mo what most people look at. What about the um, vendor 101? 105, like that's mm -hmm. where you get passes. Do they, are they comfortable saying, because like was it changed part of the United Healthcare and some others like they're vulnerable they're up to a billion dollars in their ransomware event and it, they might not have made someone's top ten top one hundred mm -hmm. that's a sidebar but that's why I think human risk can play in is your compliance team your third party risk team 
will know how to interact with these supply chains, these third-party vendors, these fourth-party vendors, because it'll mm -hmm. be better their job. So when they're evaluating contracts and onboarding, they know what to ask, even if it's a medium-risk company. To them. Yep, yep. Um, one more comment uh, that I wanted to focus on from uh, Jonathan was around AI and how we can best leverage that. You know, there's the idea that um, you might be able to migrate away from caring whether end users are impacted, you know, and if you have proper, you know, AI oversight and the ability to monitor these things, can can we address that? There's, what do you guys think? Yeah, I, I see it both ways, right? I, I, I love technology. I, I love I love emerging technology, but I, I really still don't think technology should replace humans, right? I, I, and and it and it, it won't because we're always going to have to have people making certain level decisions, and you know for the foreseeable future. And you know it's uh, there's always kind of like the jump ahead and then the the reality sucks you back. I think if we can kind of compare AI to the electric car, I think maybe, you know, give us a couple of years and we're going to be pulling back on some of this AI jumping forward. You know, we really jumped in two feet with the electric car and now we're all kind of pulling back a little. Okay, it's, let's take our foot off the gas on this. Maybe we're not going to all be driving electric vehicles by 2035. And, and you know, this is a, a bigger picture, bigger conversation. Okay, great. You know, a couple of years ago, it was like, what's a gas car anymore? So I think with AI, I want to be you know careful with yes, we can look on it, lean on it, um, and be you know excited about it. But I really don't think we're going to be in the situation where we we're going to have that human element so mm -hmm. far removed that we don't have to worry about it. And yeah. I think from the other point that scares the hell out of me is we need to start having the human element at the forefront of our security conversations because of the you know the emerging threats from ai and where ai could take us we need to be aware of the security threats we need to be understanding what the, the models mean we need to be prepared for what could come and i think the humans need to be at the helm of that uh we need to be driving the ship not the other way around lovely yeah yeah so just to add on to that so one of the things the other thing that really um bugs me about security awareness is that it really excludes technology and policy from the conversation of humans. And these things do not exist in a vacuum. So it's like Brian was just saying, you know, AI doesn't replace humans. You're not gonna replace humans. You're not gonna replace technology with humans either or humans with technology or policy with any of these. They exist together. And you have to have um, verbiage that includes those three things together and doesn't just talk about one element or another because they're very siloed and this is causing a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it I mean, just a quick example. Sorry. You, you look at a controlled situation like the NSA with all the stop gaps and, 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 and protections that are possible in place. And then there's the human element of an Edward Snowden, right? It doesn't matter how protected a system and element or anything will ever be. As long as there's still a human who controls it, which there always will be and has access to it, then we have to consider the human insecurity at all turns. Mm -hmm. And it makes me think, and I'm, I'm glad Jonathan uh, sort of clarified, basically, he wants to make con make sure we understand the context was around, you know, there, there always has to be a human to input uh, and articulate what the AI does. Um, I, I wrote a post a few years ago about uh, the future of compliance training. And as everything gets automated and um, outsourced, you know, who's left in the organization? Well, the people who are making decisions about what goes into the technology, what comes out of the technology, what are the exceptions that the technology can't handle, and how do you configure the technology, right? So there's always going to be the people required for for those parts of it. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, once once uh, automation and technology does everything for us, um, I heard a quote before that said, uh, we will all become poets and philosophers and we don't need to actually work. So that's... Well, and yeah, it's a great point, Jonathan, what he, what he makes and how like, you know, this will... AI and automation will, will get rid of the human error aspect. And I, that's absolutely, that excites me, right? Like humans shouldn't be setting passwords that are, you know, one, two, three, four. And then, you know, and, and hopefully those are things that, that completely get removed. If you remove all of those security errors and attack vectors from the, from the, from the landscape, that's fantastic use of technology and AI. I, I, I couldn't agree more with that. And those are the things that we then need to build processes around and, 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 and take care of. And those are efficiencies. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Fleetus. Just to go with the checks and balances, but you should never have AI produce something that you don't know the answer to. Mm. You should always allow it to 
fine tune and give you advice and be able to give you an output, but you should be able to validate you. Yeah, I think verification, human. you don't mean you may not know it in advance, right? Yeah, but, but you should be able to validate read something and quickly realize this is dated. This is wrong. This is a, um, it's being, it's hallucinating. It, it's got, it's dreaming mm -hmm. up something. Yeah. It says it with so much confidence. All generative <laughs> AI uses active, it, it tells it like it's, the, an like the authority, yes, subject yeah. matter expert, yeah. and it may not be the subject matter expert because it was last trained in twenty three, and new stuff came out in twenty four. Yep, yep. Okay, I'm going to uh, move on to our uh, next poll question, and if I can get it started somewhere, it's around here. I'll find it. Uh, da, 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 sure, I will. Um, uh, well, maybe uh, Ryan, you can read the qu poll question, and I'll find the poll. So. Yeah. So under which executive leader should a human risk management program uh, lead report in to an organization? So again, we're, if we're going to reframe this, if we're going to evolve this, then where do we direct it? Right. So it does it go into the chief, chief operating officer, uh, CISO, head of IT, uh, head of HR, our service desk, our security ops person, you know, or other. Um, and, and please, yeah, just drop that in the chat if you, if you have a, a thought or, or feeling of where it is. And there it is. There's the poll. Finally found it. I can move all these windows I have around. Thanks for your patience, guys. Um, okay, so yeah, once we've uh, got some poll in, uh, uh, answers coming in uh, off that, we'll uh, ask how can CISOs and other executives find the right terminology and assign the right responsibilities for the new HR paradigm, HRM paradigm. So um, Ryan, go ahead. Yeah, quick, I'll be quick on this one because I think, you know, we've all touched on this already a little bit, but it's, you know, uh, communication with the team. It's it's working with your internal stakeholders and everything else to find what works for your culture and your environment. And to Fletus's point early, what works with your localization, right? And what works to, you know, to Thea's point, what works with the labeling and how it is going to get translated and, and digested, right? If we call something a knife, people think it's sharp. If we call something a spoon, it's like, oh, okay. Right. So, you know, we have to be mindful of all of these things. Um, and and again, we don't just don't just pick a label because the industry tells you that or a sales rep does. Right. That's going to and if you force that backwards, it's not going to work. That's not going to be an organic growth. So I think let's let's work as a team to come up with what's the best approach to represent this. And it, it might not be a change or it could be an evolution. And, and I think there's a lot a lot to be explored. Yeah, uh, Fletus, you had uh, your hand up. Yeah, and, and Thea touched on this, and I'm pretty sure she'll touch on it again. It's We have to define it, and we have to get our executives to agree to the definition before it ever goes into practice. And then once the definition is refined, it needs to be crowdsourced by your peers and by someone else before you even push it again. So it's got to be agreed upon internally, then it needs to be blessed or at least been socialized externally, and then it can come back internally. Because if not, you and I are going to get on the call like this, and we're going to be say HRM and mean east west like we're just not we're gonna be two ships passing the night again we're not going to be in the same line my program is going to be going west your program is going to be going east and then if we change employees to what we were talking about earlier they're going to have this definition of it and going to be confused and now we've got to start the the culture behavioral aspect again because that's not how i was taught this that's that age-old question i didn't learn that in school you didn't teach me it that way argument so the yeah, i'd love you to expand on that yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it's absolutely following on from what you've just said, Peter. It's like people function on assumed behavior or like assumed knowledge, assumed behavior, if you, you know, and and do not assume that you have the same knowledge as somebody else. We, when we were discussing that earlier, you're going to be bringing in your human resources now. We're going to bring in C-suite executives that suddenly have to pay attention when they really didn't before. And their ideas of risk are around money and they're around, you know, other things that aren't cybersecurity. Um, so taking that extra time, and I'm not saying you have to talk to people like they're stupid, but assume no knowledge when you're speaking to them initially. Assume they have no idea what any of this is about and try and explain it to them from that level. Um, and that is yeah, probably my, my number one piece of advice is, is, is again, I think everyone said communication um but I, yeah I, I agree with you. yeah um also tony pointed out you know i one of the items i think i missed was chief risk risk officer and that's not in every organization but it, it uh, can be in many and i think that's a great uh, place to actually have this role too because it actually does encompass risk and um 
I think that in a lot of cases, though, it can be hard, especially if you don't have a chief risk officer, because it ends up being a matrix kind of relationship, right? You're reporting sometimes to the corporate side and sometimes to the IT side or uh, other areas. So I think it's it's challenging and every organization can be different in that respect. So not sure how much we can prescribe on that, but I think it's just uh, worthwhile to point out you can talk to those people in the different roles that could be uh, in charge of it and try and gain some agreement or collaboration to have, you know, a, a sort of dotted line relationship wherever the, the position ends up. Yeah, with that, I mean, a lot of organizations put the CRO into the CIO's role and or the CISO's role, or you have a CSO, the chief security officer, which may have both physical cyber and then the GRC component, which GRC is one something that like, I think a lot of organizations today, governance, risk and compliance can be in and out of security. It doesn't always report into the security work. A lot of people want it there because of the the compliance piece that we deal with in security, but it can report to your CRO or your legal officer or your chief of staff. Some organizations have those because they're administrative tasks. Like your admin officer can take over that. That way your legal team is sitting with the GRC folks and your attorneys have access to the GRC folks and, and back vice versa. So like, it's tricky when we talk about GRC, where does it end up lying? And in a few years, it may not be with security. The more and more I think about as we continue to evolve as a nor as an industry, governance and risk and compliance is getting much more difficult and it maybe doesn't sit with security straight. It may go to legal. It may go to risk, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know what the heck Ryan's up to, but he's pasting a whole bunch of stuff in the chat and he... <laughs> Oh, I yeah, I was going to mention that at the end there, but uh, I, I asked Chat uh, Chat GPT to write us a theme song for the cybersecurity oh, awesome. and that is the song. If anyone has the uh, desire to record that or drop it on a beat, then uh, feel see. free to send it along. All right. Well, maybe before the end of this uh, session, I'll, I'll paste it into the, uh, the view that everybody can see when we do the recording, and maybe we'll get more visibility on it, and somebody will pick it up. That's uh, <laughs> amazing. Okay. So uh, next is just to sort of try and wrap things up here. Uh, again, I'm lost, but uh, here we go. Um, I'm going to say, um, let's talk about some of the in insights we've uh, gained over the period of the session. I'll review the polls uh, results in a minute, um, but just wanted to highlight, you know, some amazing points made by all, all of the panelists. Uh, Thea was talking about, you know, do we need to replace security awareness or do we want to introduce human risk management as something that is sort of more of an umbrella? Um, and, you know, as, as Shelley had said, maybe think of it more as a maturity evolution. Um, and also that uh, organizations can have limited resources for having an official uh, HRM kind of, uh, or cult security culture expert. Um, so it, it might have to be done a little bit on the, on the fly and you have to sort of work that out. Uh, Fleetus pointed out that, you know, the, the risks of changing could imply that you know, the labels we're giving it can have meanings to people and it could even have meanings geographically, you know, as we spread um, this um, terminology and, and messaging around, it might have different meanings in different parts of the world. Uh, also, the idea of uh, executive visibility using the term human risk management can resonate more with executives. Um, Ryan mentioned, you know, we could be losing momentum if we're actually changing the name of our program straight from security awareness to human risk management. So I think it might make sense more to have it more of an uh, all encompassing thing. And as, as Fleetus said, security awareness is a tool that's in your toolbox uh, as part of the whole human risk management uh, program. And also the employee loyalty uh, issue, you know, do, are we doing it right? Are we taking the, the human uh, part of the equation into account as people are, you know, thinking about whether they want to work at our organizations or not? So some really interesting uh, insights there. Now I'm going to uh, take a moment to uh, end our poll and then I have to share these things. Just a second here. I'll uh, get this going. Here we are. Uh, and share another screen. Okay, so uh, this is question number one. It was, um, which of the following is true for you? I use security awareness to refer to an entire program for cybersecurity and assessment of all staff. I use human risk management. So there's 26% uh, say security awareness, 16% say 
uh, human risk management. Um, and then some say they use uh, security awareness to refer only a portion of the program at uh, 21%. And nobody says they use human risk management as a portion of a program. That makes sense if it's going to be an overarching kind of uh, program rather than um, a piece of one. Um, and 37% say they use both security awareness and human risk management with as distinct parts of the same program. So I think that also fits into what we're talking about. Anybody have a comment on those things? Those, those results? I think they're not, not that uh, surprising. So um, I'll go back and uh, share another one that is uh, number two. So that is, do you believe that there is any significant value in changing the name of a program from security awareness to human risk management? 45%, uh, the majority say, or not the majority, but the highest number say yes. 10% um, say no. And 25% say, well, it depends. Uh, and there were some uh, stipulations in there about why. And 20% said they don't know. Uh, one more poll question we will uh, do a quick view of, and that will be under which executive leader should a human risk management program report uh, in an organization? CISO, chief security officer, or chief risk officer? Hey, I did have chief risk officer there. 77%. Um, so pretty much in agreement there. Some said the COO and also head of IT, HR, and operations. So some really interesting results, I think. Um, any overall insights on uh, those findings from the poll? I'm no? surprised not more people said higher up the chain, to be honest. Really? Interesting. Yeah, because I think it's, it's one way to leverage that. If they're in charge of it and they're ultimately responsible, that's how you get them engaged in what you're doing. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it is so worth talking, though. <laughs> Yeah, if it's if it's organizationally appropriate, and it's not appropriate for everybody, but I would have expected more people to say, you no, know, push it up to board level or, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think on that one too, and I danced around a little bit that I would love to see with the change of human resource management is more interaction with your board or your owners. So a private equity firm, if you have a board of advisors, or whoever owns your company, because right now, most of the time you train them once a year. And what are you training them on? it's usually risk to the organization. So it's easy to bring in the human side. And most security professionals, when they present to them, they submit a full slide and they may get one bullet point. Yeah. That's the sad part is you submit a full slide of material and you get one bullet yeah. point, maybe a sentence or two. Yeah. And that's what you get. And it's usually presented by your CIO, your CTO, your C. EO may even present it for you to the board and it's not even the right individual presenting it. They're just presenting the context in which they read. Yeah. And I think it's the same problem no matter where you put the person because the executives who are going to make decisions about investment in this stuff are very busy. They they like traffic light you know, <laughs> dashboards and saying, are we good? Are we bad? What do we need? You know, and uh, I, I know that if Michelle was here, she would be saying, uh, yeah, but traffic light dashboards are, are not that helpful. So, um, you know, how do we articulate those things uh, to the people who can make those investment decisions? Um, anyway, uh, really good insights. I think it is good that people were, you know, pointing pretty high up the chain in terms of uh, the role. So that's great. Um, well, thanks, folks. I uh, just want to take a moment uh, to acknowledge Click Armor that uh, sponsors these this series of biweekly sessions. Uh, Click Armor does have a package for security awareness training uh, within your human risk management program. Now I know how to say it properly. Um, so uh, we have a startup packages for uh, $4.99 for up to 25 users and $1,500 uh, for uh, or $14.99 for 150 users. Um, so reach out uh, to Ryan or myself if you'd like a demo of the uh, Click Armor gamified security training platform. Now, uh, usually we announce our next session, but um, since Ryan and I are both going to be away in two weeks on uh, May 1st, uh, and we're not going to say why because then Fleetus would hack us or something. Uh, but uh, we're uh, taking suggestions for what our next session might be. Uh, somebody suggested operations security, so or, or OPSEC. So we may do that um, sometime in May, but uh, keep your eyes open on our uh, channel uh, on LinkedIn and uh, visit the Cybersecurity Awareness Forum, uh, the link and the uh, QR code are here, uh, where you can collaborate. You, I post the recordings there uh, from all these sessions and people can comment on them. So um, any final words uh, roundtable from, from the uh, panelists? 
I think it's a great conversation. And, and I think we learned, you know, that uh, this is an evolving topic uh, and, and we're going to keep probably reframing this. It'll be interesting to see what we're calling it in five years. Is it going to be called the human robot awareness? You know, I, I, I <laughs> we'll, we'll see, but, you know, I think the important part is let's, you know, consider all yeah. of, you know, let's not box ourselves in. Let's, you know, keep this evolving and, and whatever it lands on, it lands on. And, and the, I think it was a mm -hmm. strong conversation. And I thank everyone in the comments today. It was, uh, it was yeah, great comments. Yeah. yeah, great comments. And of course, the obvious question is, are we going to change the name from the Cybersecurity Awareness Forum to something else that reflects human risk management? And, uh, you know, it's a fair question and we might do that. Uh, not in a huge hurry. We don't have a lot of resources to do it um, unless a lot of people buy some click armor stuff soon. So yeah, that was going to be my comment. Don't hurry to change the name. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. hurry to change the name. Change the definition. And let the name it. follow. <laughs> but redefine your program first. Let the definition yeah sink in and then rebrand it to fit and it may not end up being hrm in your org it may be mm -hmm. something slightly different but exactly. get the definition mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, I, well, like scott scott's been you know using human enabled you know risk management right so it's it's where we focus it more specific and so there's there's one evolution of it and there, there could be a lot to Fletus's point based on your organization your needs your existing culture or where you want to get your culture and, and this could be an opportunity for a lot of organizations to redefine their security culture by making it a more encompassing program and, and, and giving it more uh, room to breathe. Well said, Ryan. Uh, and with that, I think uh, we will thank everybody for joining. Do hope to see you back again soon. Please monitor our LinkedIn uh, and also the uh, forum community, and uh, we'll announce when the next session will be and hope you can join us then. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, folks.